What's up, what's up, what's up? We got it right this time. Three times you are not out, Travis. Welcome back to the <laughs> yeah. best women's boxing show, period. I am Cynthia Conte and my lovely host. And I am Pocahontas. I'm like, I gotta. No, I am Giandra LaBeouf, and I am excited to be with this lady and this little king <gasps> right here. We gotta talk about what that is. That's my little king. It's so funny. I'm like, what is this called? I'm like, I, I just wanted to grab your hair. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. Come on, <laughs> after dark episode. I know, right? Well, you guys, thank you for tuning in again. Um, we got a great show coming up for you, but uh, first. We got some spill the tea, girl. I mean, we, you know, I never like to post things about my son, like especially on my computer. But since I have a one-year-old, I have a one-year-old, guys. Okay. Whoever knew that I would have a a baby in the first place? But look how cute he is. Okay, he's given, uh, you know, uh, the cuter version of first things first. Ah, Papa. You know, he's got the, <laughs> you know, he's got his little crown, and he celebrated his very first milestone. That, but that was his theme. Was um, it's all good, baby, baby. It was okay, good. little Papa. Man. So, you know, I'm a mom, but I'm my kid's old. She's a grown woman now. So, how has the the balance been for you now? that you've had a full year with the baby and trying to balance this, go to fights, research, and just hold it all together. Hold it all together. How has it been? It is you? hard. It, you know, when they say a woman's job is never done, it really is never done. It's kind of like, I, I'm, I'm okay. I got to put him to sleep. I got to feed him. Oh my God, I have to go to work. I have to research. I have to work out. I mean, there's really not enough time in the day. I don't understand how women are super women. I just don't get it. It's very hard. And we only have one. You know, we have <laughs> uh, we only have one each. You know, we're female fighters. have got multiples. Yeah. There's people. It's a, it's a lot to hold down. So salute to all the moms out there yeah. who are in our space, outside of our space, or trying to hold it all down, because it's, it's, it's never done. It's mm-hmm. a job. Never. We have an exciting guest, we have a guest coming in today. Boxing royalty. You know, it doesn't... It, when we get to interview people like this, you don't get to interview... Uh, we don't. Sometimes we don't get to interview the father, who is a, a, a well-known legend in their own right, but we also get to... We get to interview the juniors. Mm-hmm. And uh, he is one... He is a a junior of a man very, very well known to the sport and he's making his own way in boxing and he just had an incredible win against the veteran himself, Gabe Rosado. And Mm -hmm. the man is stepping in here, Mr. Shane Mosley Jr. What up, what up, what up? There's your headphones. Come on in. That reminded me of... uh... Uh, E.T. What up, what up, what up? <laughs> Thank God it's Monday. Do you have, since we talking about rap, since we started off with a little big pop, you got any bars? You got a hot oh, 16 oh for no. us? Oh, oh no. come on. No, 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 no. I just do karaoke <gasps> on the side. What's your go-to at karaoke? Yeah. Oh, uh, so <laughs> I got a bunch, but um, I like uh, Mr. Brightside by The Killers. Give it to us. Give us, well, not enough to get the copyright, but give us like 20 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Um, coming out of my cage and I've been doing just fine. God, I gotta be down because I want it all. Started out with a kiss. How did it end up like this? It was only a kiss. It was only a kiss. Ooh! Oh, 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 oh. Wow! And, and just for like a, you know, since we're in Las Vegas, they're from Las Vegas. So uh-huh. It's like a staple. You know? Oh, okay. Oh, Vegas. you never know. They might hear you and be like, come jam with us at our oh, concert. <laughs> Crazy. Have you ever walked out to their songs? No, I haven't. Well, uh, there you go. That's only for karaoke, like birthdays. You know, you, you know, have too much to drink. And, uh, <laughs> oh, you just don't do it on a normal basis. Like, give me the mic. No, 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 no. <laughs> like, this is a special. Okay, I mean, I could sing a little bit, but um, yeah, like you, you know. did great. Yeah, I mean, I used to be in choir when I was in high school, so um, yeah. Oh and my I'm, goodness. Like Filipino, way, way, way back. So, well, we were just talking about okay, that. Okay, I was telling her I feel like I have a kindred connection with Filipino people. I yeah. went to my prom with a Filipino guy. Oh, wow, my wow, high wow. school best friend is Filipino. Yeah. This beautiful woman is Filipino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Ilocanos and uh, Kabugawans <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> oh Shout out gosh. to everybody. See, yeah. I be really knowing. Yeah. I even yeah. know how to make lumpia. Wow. wow. You know what? I'm going to have to make you all some Filipino food. Oh, psh. I'm yeah. there. You're like, <laughs> I'm come I'm back to the it. brown table talk. <laughs> okay, that's what we're calling it. We brown the table brown. It's all brown right. up in here because brown don't break down. No, it don't. No, it don't. Nope. Okay, Shane. Yes. So how has it been since your fabulous win? Congratulations. Complete domination <laughs> over a good friend of ours, um, but a veteran, Gabe Rosado. Yeah, um, 
it was incredible. Like, I mean, it was just incredible to be in the ring with him. I, I, I was like, I felt honored, honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been in the ring with everybody and for me to have the opportunity to be in there with him, learn from him and show my skills against him was just incredible. Um, yeah, um, so I broke down the fight uh, before and like when I first heard of it, I was just like, yes, like without a doubt, like, yes. But you don't even, this is the first time you've ever fought at 168. Uh, well, second time, but, but, um, but you fight at normally 160. 160. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you know, he had fought at 154 at one point in time. Yeah. The, right. The fight before he fought at 160, he fought Mogia at 160. So it's like, it's yeah. all relative. Um, that's a lot. I mean, at least you guys can make the weight. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So for, for me, it's just like, you know, like at the same time, he's a basically a middleweight himself. Yeah. But nevertheless, it was just like uh, without the, the weight or anything like that, because that's here nor there. Mm -hmm. What really counts is the skill, mm -hmm. right? And, and how to use what you do to your best ability so he can't use what he does best. Um, so in my mind, he couldn't outbox me. And people thought, especially even people I knew, like, were like, you can't outbox Gabe. Like, what do you mean? I was like, <laughs> you just I, I, know. I, well, you know, I, I, I appreciate what you what you what you think, but sometimes you just got to show people. If they don't believe you, you it's better yeah. to show them than to tell them. Yeah. And so I was just like, okay, if, you know, that's your your opinion. A few guys, uh, one guy in particular, he hit me up and was like, "Wow, you outboxed him." Name him and shame the devil. <laughs> <laughs> I will not do that. Um, but uh, he was like, you know, like wow, you know, like I, I um, you outboxed him, and I was like, I told you. <laughs> and wow. he just he just sent me the laugh face. I was like, I told you I could outbox him, mm -hmm. you know. And and it's just believing in yourself. But um, I knew that I could do that. A lot of people thought that Gabe uh, brings a fight, and in my opinion, when I watched him, he does not actually. Everybody who has ever fought him brings it to him, and he is willing to engage and counterpunch them. So it looks like he's. He's the one engage. He's the one bringing it to them. Yeah, because he doesn't back down, right? Yeah. So somebody like Mongia, for instance, Mongia would land a would land like five punch combination, and then he would land in the middle of that his own two punches or three punches or whatever the case is. So it looks like there's a lot of action going on, but realistically speaking, if you take those five punches and then move, he's not going to hit you, and you see a bigger, wide range of what is going on rather than mm. boom, 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 boom. Then it's like whoa, there's a lot going on, and he's, but, you know, uh, I don't know if I can cuss on here. Oh, yeah, yes, it's a grown-ass show. <laughs> All right, well, great. Gabe is not a bitch, and he's not willing to, you know, back down from a fight. So when somebody's bringing it to him, he's like, fuck you, come on, let's yeah. let's go. And that then, in turn, like, you know, obviously the, the ego comes in, and, and he starts going in, and you start going in, and then it looks like, wow, he's really engaging in this fight, but it's more so it got brought to him, and he's not willing to back down. So I knew if I fought him and did what I did and moved, he wouldn't be able to, you'd be able to see a clear win. Mm. Yeah. Right? Boom, boom, move. Boom, boom, move. And that's how, how boxing works. I Amen. love how you're breaking that down yeah. because when we hear, when we think of fights against Gabe Rosado, it's always, he's a warrior. He's going to bring, and he is no doubt. He's going to bring the fight, but no one has ever really gotten into the intricacies post win or otherwise. And, how many of his fights did he did you study? Were you a fan of watching him fight before this? And is that what led? Because the IQ of how you're breaking this down is crazy. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm, I've, I've been a fan of, of his. I think he's a great fighter. He's a great warrior. When I like like I said, when I heard it, I was just like, yes. Mm -hmm. Like wow. Why wouldn't I want to fight a guy like him? Um, you get the experience. You get everybody basically that he has fought all in the one. And uh, I had never thought that that fight would ever come to me, but when it did, it was just like, I can't turn this down. Mm -hmm. This is incredible. Um, so like, I had watched him fight. I mean, I even uh, was in Curtis Stevens' training camp when he fought Gabe Rosado in BKB. Oh, okay. Um, when he fought um, Triple G, all these guys. I mean, you know, he was in my dad's training camp uh, when he fought uh, Margarito. Wow. So, I mean, I know Gabe, you know what I mean? It was just like... Especially, too, like, Gabe is kind of where, like, not necessarily, like, saying, like, um, 
you know, I, I'm 17, well, sorry, I'm 18 and four, four as a professional fighter, mm -hmm. right? Losing is frowned upon in boxing or fight sports. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we can talk about, go down that rabbit hole another day, but um, it's frowned upon, but it shouldn't be, right? People lose, people fail, people mess up. Look Isn't at Canelo. He has one loss and he's an all-time great. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. And and just because, you know, guys like Floyd Mayweather have made that look so, you know, great um, and, and kudos to him. But that shouldn't be the standard. Mm -hmm. It should be we should just be putting on great fights and you shouldn't be shamed for losing. Yeah. Uh, but of course, networks, people involved, you know, want to make you look a certain way. Oh, you have a blemish. We, we, we can't pay you that much or you're not you're not deserving or things like that. And then also too, you know, boxing fans on the other hand, they, you know, you lose and they're like, oh, you, you ain't shit. I, we knew it. You know, it's like, mm. what? Tell me how many times that you failed in your life. How many yeah. businesses you've gone through or jobs that you've messed up or. Or even had the bravery to try. Yeah. Exactly. Like, you know what I mean? Like people mess up and it shouldn't be frowned upon. It should just be like, okay, what are you going to do now? How are you going to get back up? Mm -hmm. Do you think when you say that, since you do have the blemishes on your record, like Manny Pacquiao, look at him. I mean, of course. He's lost to some of the greatest uh, Bernard fighters. Bernard Hopkins. Yeah. So exactly. Did you think that, did, did you go through that um, in your career that you, since you've had the losses, how did you pick yourself back up? Or did, were people just like putting you down like you don't belong in boxing? Well, uh, I mean, so uh, fortunately for me, I get a lot of that because, you know, you're the sun. Right. You know, <laughs> I, I have this this giant to stand up next to. Um, and, you know, when I, I figured, you know, like everybody always says, oh, you're never going to be as good as him. You're never going to be as good as him. And hey, you might be right, but you're not that, him. Exactly. Exactly. That doesn't concern me. Like like at the end of the day, when both of our careers are done or my career is done, then if you want to compare us both, that's fine. I don't care. But as of right now, that means nothing to me. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, <laughs> like I good. need to do what I need to do what I need to do to be the best man, the best fighter, you know, all of that that I can be. If I'm going to be what my, my dad was, why am I even here? Why am I right. even living? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like You're here to make your own legacy. Exactly. So I'm, I'm here to do that. So I get a lot of that, um, you know, from people, boxing fans especially. Oh, you know, because I have the blemishes, because I've lost early on. You know, they always say, oh, you're never going to be as good as uh, as him and all this stuff. And it's like, you know, at first that bothered me, especially when when he was training me. Now that I'm I moved out to Las Vegas, I mm -hmm. like I, I, I you know, he's not um, a coach or anything like that in my in my corner. He always calls me, though. <laughs> like he calls me, checks up on me. He asks me how everything's going. But uh. um when, when, uh, before you go into that, uh, how did you have that conversation that dad, you can't be in my corner anymore. I need to have someone else. Cause we see that right now with a lot of, uh, fighters and uh, father Absolutely. teams, it doesn't work out or it shouldn't be. And they need to switch up their corners. Um, obviously it's a different, uh, difficult conversation, but, um, I feel like, uh, if it doesn't work out for you, I mean, you need to be able to stand up for yourself. Um, I think for with me and him, it was kind of a mutual understanding. Like, I think he saw that um, it wasn't beneficial for me. Um, and um, I felt the same way. And it was kind of like, um, I don't know if you know a guy named Eric Brown. I know Eric Brown. Yeah. yeah. So so um, it was kind of interesting because my dad was like, hey, uh, you want to work with Eric Brown? And I was like, yeah, I want to work with Eric Brown. And then it kind of just like progressed from there like it was just like oh hey i'm gonna go work with eric he's like all right and then it was kind of like the understanding like yeah i think it's best for me to work with somebody else that's and, and kind of create my own um avenue mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so and that's and that's how it like stayed um and it's it's better to have my dad there than to like feel like um i have my dad my coach at the time he was like my manager <laughs> you know what i mean like he was just like <laughs> everything I think I, he just wants to be involved because he's been in the business of, of course he does and sometimes the best thing for somebody is even though you want to be that person for them and everything for them to let them 
create that on their yeah. own. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's some people like that that works best for to have like that comfort of the parent like being everything. Uh, for me, I don't feel like it it was beneficial. I took everything to heart. Anything he said to me, it was just like, Duh! Yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and, like it's like stabbed the heart. And then like there was like times where we were like at fights and like literally like as we're walking out to the ring, I remember we were in Tennessee and I'm walking out to the ring and as I'm walking out to the ring, like this guy comes out in the crowd and like stops us in the middle of me walking out and it's like, hey man, can I, can I get an autograph? Are you serious? I swear <laughs> to God. And, and I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Like I'm literally telling this guy, like get the fuck out of here. I'm, I'm about to walk to the ring. Like, mm-hmm. what are you doing? Yeah. Like, you know, like, <laughs> and, and so like, that was just like one of the things where it's like, you know, maybe, maybe it's best for me to, you know, kind of have my own thing. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And, and, and you can support me from, you know, as a father and from there, you know, and I think that's best. I'm and, super intrigued by father son combinations. You know, you look at Floyd, you look at Chavez Jr. and Sr., there's you, just in terms of boxers where the father and the son both boxed. You know, we have like Teofimo people where the father is the trainer and the son is the boxer, but that's a very small fraternity of people who who reside within that. What is the what is something you some insight you can give to us about that? Um it's it's really hard, uh, especially having like having his name as yeah. well. Like, <laughs> it's the hard part. You know what I mean? Like, because there are sons out there that you know, like uh, Connor Ben, for yeah. instance. Mm-hmm. Like, um, he doesn't have his name in. But I'm not saying he's that, not a he's not a junior. Right. Yeah, I'm not saying that he doesn't have it hard because he does have the, the the expectation. But he also is living up to that expectation. He's doing great. I'm mm-hmm. I'm really really proud of him, and and he's doing a great job. He was a but his father is also not in his corner as well. I think you have if if you have that, you have to be able to separate yourself in some way or at least feel like you can separate yourself because otherwise you're not you you don't feel like your own person. Um even like when I'm out like I don't tell people I'm Shane Mosley Jr. I just tell people I'm Shane Mosley. The yeah. famous the face is kind of telling no, me, bro. But but no, I understand that. But what I'm saying is is like why do I have to tell somebody I'm Shane Mosley Jr.? Junior. Gotcha. If I was somebody else, like anybody, I'm just Shane Mosley. Mm-hmm. And then they go, Oh, are you son of Yes, I'm Shane Mosley Jr. Mm-hmm. Right. But I'm gonna tell somebody I'm Shane Mosley because that's who I am. Right. You okay. know what I mean? I'm not like Shane Mosley Jr. I don't have to introduce hey, I'm Shane Mosley Jr. Cause like any other junior, just, just say says, I'm Shane Mosley the second. <laughs> no, well, I'm, oh, I'm actually the not. Third. Oh, you're not. No, I'm I'm just junior. Junior. Yeah, because the junior and the second Did is actually. Did you ever ask your dad why'd you name me this name? Uh, it was actually my mom. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it wasn't my dad. It was my it was uh, it was my mom actually. Okay. I don't think that um, like he cared either way, but my mom like loved my dad so oh, yeah that's <laughs> she like loved my dad so like she she was like you're gonna have <laughs> if you were to name yourself a different name what would you what would what would what would that name be well um no i mean like i i've learned to appreciate it um and and obviously it's a great name like shane mosley is a pretty <laughs> it's pretty name. strong yeah so there's pretty, worse things to be <laughs> exactly um but like so i wouldn't name myself anything different but i think it was a journey of kind of understanding it and then um also when i found out what my name my name actually means is just gave it a whole nother level and what's that so um shane actually means gift of god oh it's okay. uh it, it's hebrew and irish uh hebrew first uh then irish it, it came from there but gift of god so that's pretty gift of god my dad's a legend yeah <laughs> wow you know what i mean like so like when you appreciate that it's like poof. yeah i love shane that's, <laughs> that is beautiful because it's actually it's two gifts your father was blessed with the name and the ability you're blessed with the name and the ability it's right. a heavy burden so right. how do you manage the burden of that because fighting in itself is is a heavy road yeah. uh difficult road to travel so how do you manage the burden of both of being a boxer and being the son of someone legendary in the sport yeah so i think what you got to do is is try not to to um make it be so heavy mm-hmm. like i'm just i'm just a guy trying to make it you know what i mean i'm just a guy trying to make be a world champion uh-huh and then when it's all said and done, we can then talk about all these other things. But right now, I'm just a guy trying to make it, trying to feed his family. I have, you know, two kids, one on the way. 
I'm just trying. I'm just trying to. I'm just oh, trying to make it. Thank you. Thank you. When? When is uh, he, he, boy or girl? Girl. <gasps> my my baby girl. Okay. I can't wait. I got two boys already. So I. Uh, so. Um, Daddy's girl. Yeah, and she's gonna be the youngest. So, um, so I'm just trying to make it. You know what I mean? I want to be a world champion. I want. You know, I mean, my my kids look at me like you know their dad. Their dad was a world champion. Their dad made something of himself for for himself. You know what I mean? Yes, our grandfather is great. And all those things, but our dad made it for yeah. You know what I mean? And 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 so that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be great for me. And I'm not trying to be a legend because of my dad. I'm not trying to, you know, live up to anything that he did. I'm just trying to do it for myself. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I talked to you when um you were doing the contender. I came yeah. over to the house and that is a whole that is another road too, also a difficult road because yeah. who gets to live with their the people they're competing against <laughs> that's a whole different mental challenge going back to that what what is that even like no one will ever know like to live with someone they're competing literally competing against yeah. um so again you like i think a lot of times we make things a lot more complicated than they have to be right and i think when you make it a little bit more simple. I'm fighting one of you guys a day or like yeah. whenever whenever that comes. I don't have to focus on everybody. I don't have to focus on what you're doing, what you're doing. I just got to focus on the guy that's in front of me, right? And that's like goal setting. That's being focused, right? All these guys, you know, when they fought, some of these guys got out of character or, or, or kind of went, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, I won that first fight, right? Mm. Blew up, everything like that. No, I need to stay focused. I don't need to worry about everything else. I don't need to worry about the cameras. I don't need to worry about anything else. I just need to focus on the next win. And then after that, the next win. And you really start to figure out about yourself. And then you start to also be being able to, throughout all that chaos, to be able to separate yourself in certain areas, right? Whereas a lot of the guys would, you know, come together and talk to each other and stuff like that. I sat in my room and wrote my journal, or I read books. Um, and really the only book that we could read because of copyright was Bibles, mm. right? Or, oh. or you had to write a journal, right? So I would write my journal and then read my journal, right? Because, because guess what? That's me reading and that's me writing and to myself, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna be this, I'm gonna stay focused. And guess what, I'm gonna read it back. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna be this, I'm gonna stay focused. And so that's how I did that. So throughout all of the chaos, you have to find something that you can latch on to and focus on. Uh -huh. Because I'm not going to make this heavier than it has to be. I'm not fighting all you guys. I don't care about none of that. I just need to focus on one of it, one of you. Wow. I know so, we're like, wow. Did that take, <laughs> so did that take you to a different spiritual plan? Were you already heavily a spiritual guy? Or by having only the Bible available to you, increase a spiritual journey you were already on? Did it begin a new journey? I've never knew that you couldn't have books in places because yeah. you're filming. That is incredible. Yeah, like, I mean, uh, um, because I had a whole list of books that I had and they were like, yeah, uh, we're gonna have to take those. And I was like, what do you mean? I can't read? And they're like, no, because if we catch you like filming and you know, we don't have- Couldn't you hide it in the Bible? Like, I mean, I... yeah, but they were just like, it was it was kind of weird. They, I, I mean, they even took away like, like the shoes that like, cause like, I think they were only doing like Sponsored. Reeboks or something oh, like that. Oh, so we yeah. can only have like Reeboks <laughs> um, or like title, I think, or something I like that. I think it was title, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, wow. it was just kind of, it was just like, you know, you had to kind of play through that, but you know, it is what it is. You just kind of find your way and, and just focus on what it is that you need to focus on. And that's what I did. You know, it's so funny. Um, I remember I was at your dad's house in Big Bear. We were doing, when Gennady was, I forgot which camp. And um, I said, oh, shoot, I forgot my notebook. And I told you this at the Hall of Fame, the last Hall of Fame here in Vegas before yeah. the pandemic hit. And they brought me this notebook. And I'm like, whose notebook is this? They're like, it's yours. I'm like, no. So I looked at it, and it was yours. Yeah. And I, I was trying to find it. I just moved to Vegas. So oh, I'm wow. like, damn. And I wanted to give it to you today because I'm flipping through. I'm like, I don't even know whose notebook this is. And I remember <laughs> in one of the on one of the pages it says, "I'm going to be a world champion someday." Yeah. And I was like, Oh my god! Yeah. And just to hear you say that, and yeah. like knowing that you would write in journals, and I saw one of it wasn't a full journal. It was just like you would write stuff, 
and then just um but you you had like a a, a man a mantra in there just like i'm gonna be a world champion someday and i'm yeah. like wow this is incredible. i'll give it back to you once i find it in one of my boxes <laughs> i'll give it back to you <laughs> you know it, it would be really cool like if you kept it and then like when i do become a world uh, champion i, I can guess. like sign it or something Oh, sweet I like that. that. Thank you. I like that. Thank As you. A man you will speak be. Because he does. <laughs> yeah. Right? Exactly. And you, you are on your road to becoming a world champion because uh, we were just talking about right before you came in. You do have the international, the intercontinental uh, belt that you bu- you uh, won off Rosado, who won won it off Beck. The Beck, bully. The bully. Yeah, Beck the bully. Yeah, because his name is like really it's, complicated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so bully. So we just say the bully. Now uh, that's one hundred sixty eight. You're naturally a 160 pounder, and we've talked about it. The the, the glamour division, 168 pounder, has become another glamour division. Hearts. They're all starting to float over. Yeah. There's belts, Ganadi, they're, they're, going with the, they're going where the money is. Yeah, well, even, absolutely. Even Ganadi. Payday. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean That's it. It, from from what it looks like, is that Ganadi is going to be vacating. That's what it looks like uh, to go. I mean, to because, fight Canelo. Yeah, because I mean, I, I think people are assuming that Canelo is going to. Bivol. Right. And then when that happens, it might more than likely Gennady's going to go up because, I mean, he wouldn't have done this deal if he wasn't trying to yeah. angle himself to get to the Triple G fight. For sure. So we have that fight. Gennady goes up. Did Demetrius already vacate or not yes, yet? Yes, he did because he has this fight. He has this fight. So uh, I think uh, WO is going to be um, the guy from... Buddy McGirt changed him. Um, you, oh, oh, ja- Janabek. 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 Janabek is supposed to fight somebody for for uh, the WBO belt. Yeah. The belt he vacated because okay. he's going to go up to 168 and fight. Um, and then we have... Um, God, because yeah. everyone has held the those belts hostage for so long. Gennady, yeah. Andre, Andre, and it's not Andre. It's not his fault. He can't get a fight. Yeah, <laughs> he can't yeah, get a fight 100%. with the other belt holders. So he's, right. moved, he's moving up to one sixty eight. Right? Yeah, it makes sense. So, um, and then uh, what it looks like is that Charlo is gonna like. It looks like you know the David Benavidez yeah. thing. If is, he wins, watch right. our interviews. Right. So, oh, yeah. so we have we have that you know going up. So it looks like all those belts just got vacated. Uh huh. Right. Uh, the only one that will more than likely kind of roll over is Lara. Lara has the WBA, mm-hmm. right? So he will more more than likely be the you know, super champ, the super whatever. champ, <laughs> yeah, whatever it's called. And then um, and then the other three are are open. So I say there all that go. I say all that to say now uh, it's a perfect that, opportunity for you. That one sixty eight <laughs> looks like it's getting crowded, and <laughs> and one sixty is getting. A little bit cleaner. Yeah, there you go. And then eventually, once you clean out that division, you move on up. Exactly. And then I'm more valuable. Yeah. Oh, even to make that full circle. So back to the contender, but I'm going to tether it to what we're talking about. Yeah. Andre Ward was in the house with the guy who reigned supreme at 168 until he did the one fight Mm -hmm. with, or the two fights with Kovalev at 172. So did he impart wisdom on you? I mean, you guys all spent time with him. I think he sparred with you guys a little Yeah, he sparred with some of the other guys. So that was another, like, thing that I had thought about. So um, I did, like, I tried to do my best to, to... All right, how they say, right, uh, the art of war is like basically if you appear weak, stay weak until, until uh, you know, the time to, you know, fire, battle, or, or attack. Shout out to Sun Tzu. Right? Uh-huh. So with that being said, it's like I didn't want to show them, like I didn't want to spar with Andre, and I didn't want to spar with anybody, like, like good. Because mm-hmm. if I spar with somebody good and do well, then they, I put them on notice. Yeah. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. So I want to I want to – Put the blinders on you guys. Yeah, I suck. I, you know, I am just the worst. I don't know nothing. I'm just here on my dad's name. <laughs> I suck. And then when you get in there, you're like, holy shit. You're good. <laughs> what the crap, right? Mm-hmm. And and maybe to a certain extent, that's what happened with Gabe. You know what I mean? He might have just looked like, oh, that's a little Shane. You know what I mean? I know I've mm-hmm. known him when I used to spot with my with his dad. He lost to this guy. Um, he, yeah, he was whatever. You know what I mean? I, I walked through him. Mm-hmm. And then, poof, here we are. What happened? You honestly, during the commentary and the timeline, people were very shocked. They're like, "We did not expect you to do that good." Exactly. Personally, I didn't even think. I'm like, "Okay, how is he going to com- uh, 
come come into battle with Gabe Rosado because exactly. he's the warrior. And I'm like, holy shit, he was able to outbox him, keep him at bay. Right. You ne- you were able to nullify his right hand because right. I know he was looking for that overhand right shot. He landed it once and I didn't let him have it again. He, yeah. The second round, he landed it. And I was like, you let him, that, uh, yeah. that hurt. <laughs> and and he, he tends to land it in the second round. He landed against Mogia in the second round. He landed against Back to Bully. He landed against me in the second round. For some reason, that second round, he just knows how to time it. But uh, but yeah, like uh, I just knew like all right, we can't do that again. Yeah. Like when he landed that, uh, I I threw a like a crappy left hook and he came right over the top and hit me, uh, with the right hand and I was like, oh okay, that that hurt. The, <laughs> the one thing that I remember hearing you say in an interview is that you were very very composed and focused. Focused. What? How did you do that? Since you're going through this fight, you're trying not to get knocked out mm-hmm. because of that overhand right. How did you stay focused? What did your corner tell you what to do and um, stay composed? So I, I find with myself, um, I have a lot of issues when there's a lot of ambiguity, right? There's a lot of things going on and you, you can get caught up in the mess. And I found that I didn't have a problem focusing. I had a problem on um, focusing too much on everything. Oh. So I'm like, I'm worried about this. I'm worried about you. I'm worried about what my coach is saying. The guy outside the ring, I'm, what did the doc say? I hear Sergio Mora. I'm like, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, what did Sergio say about me? You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm just worried about too much all at once. Mm-hmm. You're worried about the noise. Yeah. And so when you just go, you know what? I'm just going to focus on this one thing this round. And then when the next round comes, breathe. All right, I'm focusing on this one thing. When you focus, let's because when people say they focus, when you say focus in on one round, what are you focusing on? Like what Gabe is gonna possibly throw at you, or the game plan that you've been going over? It all depends. It all, it really all just depends. Um, but you try not to make it very complicated because, like, uh, you know, our our eyes, for instance, right? If we look at one thing, you can see like if you move your pen, I can see her earrings shining. But I'm looking at this apple, mm-hmm. right? And I could see all those things. I don't have to try. I can see it. My brain is comprehending all of this stuff. I just got to focus on the apple. Yeah. Right? And so it's kind of the same concept. If you just focus on one thing, right? If I focus, okay, I'm going to land this many jabs this round, right? Everything else is just like, boom, I'm landing a jab. Boom, I'm landing a jab. Okay, oh, shit. Right hand's there. Hook's there. Okay. Wow. All right. <laughs> Right. Then it's like just this explosion of things. Right. Just like goal setting. If you set one goal, right. If my goal is to have, I don't know, drink, you know, six waters today. You know, you're, you're going to be like, wow, I feel a lot better. I don't feel like, you know, like a uh, sugar high or I don't feel like, you know, burnt out or anything like that. I feel really hydrated. I feel good. Whatever. It's just it all came from that one action. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know everything else kind of falls into place. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it, it's the same thing. I, you know how they always have the mics in the corner to hear the trainer? I wish they had mics in your head so we I know what, what you're thinking and saying That's to probably going to come. It's probably going to be those, uh, what do they call oh those things? The, the glasses now that oh, we're virtual, yeah. Yeah, yes. that kind of thing. Yeah. We'll probably have that experience. So then to follow up with that and the focusing on a singular goal and trying to reach that path, when do you know to switch it off because if you're too singularly focused, you might miss what's coming. And they say the most dangerous shot is the one you don't see. Right. So when, how do you even nab It's split second reaction things for, I'm, I for mean, fighters. I mean, okay, for instance, like you don't have to worry about those things because you've been training, right? So if that one thing is attached to all of these things, then I don't have to worry about all of these things. I just got to worry about this thing, mm-hmm. right? And all of those things are attached to this thing. So you just focus on this thing, right? Um, because let's just say like I'm worried about the right hand. I, if I am trying to do, you know, stay on away from the right hand, whether that's like slipping on the outside or staying more to my right to neutralize your right, then... You're gonna see the jab. You're gonna see the right hand. You're gonna see movements on that on that way, and you're gonna see him make the adjustment if he goes more to his left to try to stop that. You're gonna be able to see that. So it's all attached. Mm-hmm. 
What's the earliest fight you ever remember watching that your dad wasn't in? <laughs> um, goodness. Where you were really cognizant of what was going on. Like, okay, this is a boxing match and I'm vested and I'm excited to see this fight. Um, I used to watch a lot of early fights because of my dad. My dad loved, like, my dad is a studier. And I didn't really realize how much of that until, like, this camp. I mean, it's always been in front of me that he, like, loves to study, but, like, he really, really can break down a fight. Oh. Um, but um, so I remember him watching uh, Roberto Duran a lot and Sugar Ray Leonard a mm -hmm. lot. And then I've, uh, he's always had, like, fight films and stuff like that. So we'd watch guys like Willie Pep, Sugar Ray Robinson. Um, we used to have, like, a lot of, like, old fights. Um, so we'd watch that all the time. Mm-hmm. What's the best advice your father has ever given you in the ring? Um, or just in general in your career in boxing? I, I think, I mean, if you're going to do it, do it to the best of your ability because you can die. Mm, that's pretty good advice. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to okay. the point. And that's lost. Um, you know, when we had a recently, we had a, a young lady fighter um, who fights with Rick Ramos. She talked about that. And oh, yeah. How Summerlin. She, Summerlin. And how she is not very impressed by this YouTube generation and the people putting on fights and they don't realize you can die literally. It is not a sport to be even a person who can halfway box if they hit you in the right place. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, it, it could be game over. Do you, do you share the same sentiment towards this YouTube generation of, and I don't even mean specifically like Jake Paul or anything like that, but even these kind of celebrity, like, there's a lot of celebrity, celebrity fights like Lamar things. Odom was in a fight, like just even yeah. those, that level of it. Um, I mean, honestly, I feel like if you take it serious, because like, I mean, there's people that do like, for instance, like jujitsu or Muay Thai and stuff like that, like all the time. And as long as they're taking it serious and, and you respect the art, I'm cool with it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm okay with you respecting it, but if you don't take it seriously, if, you, if you're not really training and not really putting in the time and, and not really trying to make that particular fight the best that you can make it, I feel like you're disrespecting it. But if you try to do the best that you can, even if you're not trying to be a professional fighter or nothing like that, but if you're just trying to do that fight and you, do all of the steps that you need to do to be the best that you can be in that fight, why would I be, you know, disrespected by that? Mm -hmm. They're doing the best that they can for that. You don't have to make a living to, to do it or be a professional like fighter in order to fight. Mm -hmm. But what you do need to do is do it to the best of your ability that particular time because you can die. Yeah. <laughs> At, at what age did you know you wanted to be a boxer? Did you see your, when you watched your dad, you're like, I want to do what my dad does? <laughs> no, no, actually, I, I didn't. I, I actually had the same conversation with uh, the guys from uh, uh, the boxing yeah, voice. The, oh. No, 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 no. The the one before that, the the guy who owns uh, uh, yeah, action junkies. <laughs> yes, thank you. Oh, you are you are from your family here. Yeah, yeah, no, I am. I am. Um, so I actually uh, answered that question. So um, before, and I'll reiterate, um, when I was about. Uh, 14 or 15, uh, one of my buddies from uh, that I grew up with, um, he was a boxer. Um, he loved my dad and everything like that. And uh, he would uh, go to Azusa Boxing Club to, to, to box. And so one day he was just like, hey, man, you want to come down to the boxing gym? And I was like, all right, cool, like whatever. And so I went down with him. Uh, Zach Padilla was there. Mm -hmm. He was uh, like, um, you know, uh, there as a coach, but uh, he was refereeing or advising the sparring session. And uh, so me and my buddy sparred that day. We did like four rounds and um, I had a bloody nose and uh, the rest was like, I'm going to do this. I need to be back. You know oh, what I mean? Like, okay. yeah, it didn't like, scare you. That's good. Oh, no. I saw blood and I was like, I need that again. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, um, there's something I think about being humbled, right? Because it can either scare you or it can inspire you, right? And I feel like when people see the lack in themselves, they usually run away from it. But why? If you see the lack in yourself, why not try to improve that? 
you know, negativity. I think the fact of being hit in the face, they're like, I don't want this no more. No, but, but, but <laughs> I don't but, want but, this but, no more. But I'm, I'm, I'm I like my about, face. No, I agree. But in general. But I'm talking about in a general sense, right? When somebody, you know, does something wrong or fails at something, they usually they don't want to do it yeah. anymore. Right. Right. And and I can, uh, you know, attest that that's something from like school, right? Because we're taught a, um, uh, like this is, there's only one answer to this question, and if it's not this, you're wrong, yeah. and you need to do the right thing, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, if I messed up, that means I'm doing this wrong, or I shouldn't be doing this, so I'm gonna do something else, right? Where it's like, that shouldn't be the thought process. It should be like, yeah, I messed up, but if I really wanna do this thing, I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna persist, yeah. I'm gonna craft myself, because ultimately it's gonna make me a better person overall right the better i improve in any area is because any skill is transferable right whether it be like talking to somebody or you know whatever boxing right it, persistence or uh mental clarity or focus or whatever all of those things um are connected and like i always say uh, in fighting you take everything that you are as a person into the ring it's not just like fighting it's like i take everything i am as a man into that ring and he takes everything as he is as a man and we clash and all of those things help us in the fight okay. and that that's in life right? okay. everything that you are takes that so uh when i got punched in the face it was just like i need to get better okay. i'm doing something wrong i don't want to do this no more i'm gonna i, I don't want to i don't want to do something wrong anymore i want to change that when that happened, did you go back to your dad, obviously, because then he knows that you went to spar. Did you ask him to teach you or you're, you you wanted to do this on your own? Um, at that particular time, I, I wanted to do it on my own. Um, and then I later, you know, when he saw me getting like amateur fights, he wanted to help. And then I was all for that. But at the beginning, <coughs> it was all. All you. All, all me. Okay. Do you want your, do you want your sons to fight? Oh, we'll get you some water. Thank you. Um, no, I don't actually. This one's unopened. What if your daughter wants to fight? Um, I would advise against it. <laughs> oh. Strongly. Strongly. Do you watch women's boxing? I mean, as you know, our of show. Course, of course. Oh, we love, you know what? It's surprising that a lot of our male fighter guests have watched it and they're very excited about women fights. Yeah, I think they should, they should be three minutes. I, I, I think they, they, um, why is it that, uh, the UFC women can do, um, Five minute rounds. Five yeah, minute five minute rounds. rounds, and they're taking knees to the head. Yeah, or that is elbows true. and all these other things. Why can't our championship uh, fighters get three minute rounds? Even like if it's ten three minute rounds, cool. Then whatever. But I think that it should be three minute rounds. Yeah, uh, that's the ongoing issue. Because mm -hmm. we're gonna get. Um, I think it's gonna bring more knockouts. We're talking about um, a, just a different fight when when it's two minutes like i mean even as an amateur i hated two minute two minute rounds too short yeah it's too short like what are you gonna do like okay <laughs> like how could you like set things up or make things like mm -hmm. you know better you don't have time to like create anything uh -huh. it, it's over you know what i mean so um i definitely think that um that should change um but um, I'm excited for a lot of these these women fights, uh, especially um, Kate Taylor and um, Amanda, Amanda Serrano. Amanda Serrano. Who do you have in that, and why why does this fight excite you? Uh, well, the, we're talking, you know, what uh, two and three, and uh, you know, and in, in women's you know fighting. Uh -huh. um, so, like, it's I think that uh, that's just a great fight, and and I'm glad to see it it, it happening, and I would probably lean a little bit more towards Amanda Serrano, um, but very, like, very little, like 51-49. Do you think that will end in a knockout or on bike It could. It, it could, uh, especially with somebody like Amanda Serrano. She's a killer. <laughs> you know, uh, we just interviewed Marlon Esparza. She said that um, people have said that Amanda hits like a Mack truck. <laughs> she hits yeah. hard. Yeah. No, I mean, it looks like it. It looks like it. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I could see that, but Katie Taylor has great boxing skills and, and ability, um, and, and, and you know what boxing skills do, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> skills do. pay the bills. Yeah, yeah they yeah, do. Yeah, absolutely. So 
I want to see it. I, I think it's just whoever is better that night. You know what I mean? I think both of them have an unlimited amount of skills uh, and ability. I think it's just, you know, who brings it that night. Um, and also uh, Kayla Meyer. She's great. I can't wait to see her. Do you see the 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 the, the juice and the beef between her and Alicia Baumgartner? No, I we have them both yeah. in here too. Yeah, yeah, they be. Oh my God, they're spicy. One's okay. one's gonna dog walk her. The other one's gonna beat Ooh. her ass. Oh, they get crazy, crazy. Like oh, wow. when Go you say, "Can them. you curse?" Okay. They be they be cursing up on this one. <laughs> they didn't even ask. Yeah, like, but. Look. This is what it's yeah. going to be. And Michaela called out if she doesn't get the fight with Baumgartner, it's a whole mess with like yeah. business and belts. She wants she calls out the winner of Taylor and Serrano. Yeah, mm-hmm. oh, wow. Yeah. That's, that's a big call out. That's a very big call out. But you know what? Hey. The, like I said, we need women to call out women like this. I don't care if they, they use color for words exactly. to, yeah. to make these fights happen. You guys do it. The guys do it all they damn fight. day. Yeah. They fight. And how many times have you watched a fight on Vine or something? And yeah. yeah. I don't think they were worrying about their language. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> how about Clarissa Shields versus Savannah Marshall? Oh, that's a, that's a good one, too. Yeah. I, oh, man. Because Savannah can crack, too. Yeah, mm-hmm. she can. Oh, man. And, um, you know, obviously... Um, Clarissa. Uh, yeah, Clarissa. She has you know great skill. She's been in there with you know everybody. So I mean, I think that's a great fight as well. Who has that fight? Who wins? <sighs> um, I'm gonna take Clarissa. I'm gonna be a little biased. I, I just I'm, I'm a fan of her. I yeah. want to see her um, just go all the way. Just keep on just creating and creating, creating. Uh-huh. But um, I mean, it's it's a dangerous fight. I mean, it looks like a. What's her name can fight? I mean, she could. Yeah, Savannah. Savannah, Yeah, yeah, she can crack. So, um, you know, it's a great fight. That's that's another one. That's I think that's the most fifty fifty. Like that's fifty fifty for sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's I. Both Katie, those two fights are so hard to go by. When we ask the women, they break it down like skill by skill, and uh, it's still fifty fifty. Yeah. No. (laughs) Hundred percent. One can get knocked out. One can either win on points. It depends on the night of exactly. how they are as a fighter. Yeah. And I'm, we going to watch it. Oh, my God. For we can't sure. wait. We can't wait. So as we are winding down, we have a segment, and you are here with us in the studio, and your camera is over here. There it is. And we call the segment Talk Yo Shit. Okay. So <laughs> whether it be to the masses, to a particular fighter, uh, to whoever left their dog poop on your lawn this morning, whatever, we want you to look into that camera and for the next 30 seconds. Shay Mosley Jr., go ahead and talk your shit. So what if I don't have any shit? What if I just got good shit well, to say? Well, yeah, that's, that's even that's good. Cool. Right. <laughs> talk your shit however you deem shit to be. All right. Well, well great. Uh, so I guess I'll just say thank you to everybody that watches. Um, I hope that um, you guys are working towards being the best that you could be because uh, I certainly am. So, um, yeah, I hope you hit all your goals and uh, be working towards greatness. I love it. You're so inspirational. I, I mean, what what am I gonna do? You know, you know who you should talk to? What's that? No Nito Donito. <gasps> I oh love Nonito. Oh my goodness. That's my guy. His I isms love are so they, we just had them in studio last yeah, week. He's so and great. I can't wait to like amazing. I mean he's another guy that, that like just amazing. won't won't stop. Like he won't like, stop and, and can't stop. You know what I mean? Like no. he's just he's he's incredible. And like I look up to guys like that. You yeah. know what I mean? Because he's still fighting, he's still trying to be the greatest that he can be. And and what he loves to do, he's like, I'll never stop fighting. Yeah, like, I mean, it's incredible you know? just the stuff he, the meditation he does yeah. when, <laughs> when his body would, say, everyone's body saying no, his body saying Sing, yeah. yes. Yep. He oh, sang for he us. He sang for us. He did some dance moves, oh, grinding wow. on the wall. I <laughs> okay. mean, oh yeah. <laughs> okay. And then real. we heard the story of him and Ro- Rachel, his wife, how yeah. they first met. Totally two different stories. <laughs> oh yeah, it's That's a really so funny, funny story. So you know when you have some time, you know listen to you know listen to the show on Spotify yeah, so or fun. watch it on YouTube. Oh my goodness, you thank you for joining us, yeah, Shane. This was me. such a pleasure. I didn't we didn't know what to expect because we're like we don't want to talk about your dad because we want to no. talk about you, you. Shane yeah. Mosley. That's yeah, right. Thank you. You don't uh, do you boxing name? Do you what do you do you have one or uh, uh, just Shane? Yeah, so well, um, I I'm a believer. So uh, like uh, Yahweh says, he he says, I am who I am. Right? Uh-huh. Why not be who you are? Yeah. Not to say that I'm anywhere near Yahweh, but you know that that saying resonated with me. It was just like, why be anything that you're not? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, I am who I am. Mm-hmm. I'm Shane Mosey Jr. So why why not be that? 
Exactly. That's so cool. And what is tell me, us again what your name means? Gift from God. Gift from God. Yes. And that's who Shane Mosley is. Oh, yeah, why not be the gift from God? Oh, so cute. Do you that's have a beautiful. name for your baby girl? Um, I'm working on it. My, my wife doesn't uh, like all the names I choose. So. <laughs> what are the ones that you've chosen so far? Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, no, I'm going to get myself in trouble. I'm not doing this. Wait, <laughs> how, why even the, uh, all this when is she? Uh, when is When's the baby coming? Uh, so um, if everything goes well, yes. uh, she's going to be um, October 10th, uh, uh, 20, uh, 2022. Yeah. And uh, that is my grandmother's birthday. Oh, so how special! I am what a blessing! And and uh, yeah, when when uh, my grandmother was, uh, you know, her last days, the last thing she said to me was, "When are you gonna have a baby girl? When are you gonna have my baby girl?" Oh. And so that was special to me because I'm having a baby girl, and it's gonna be on her birthday. That's amazing! Right? Hallelujah! Well, well, let you? us know. We yeah. want to know you some stuff. I know. Ooh, right. Oh, no. that's so special! I can't wait to see um, your uh, whatever her name. Baby Mosley. Baby Mosley. Baby Mosley. Wow. What are your son's names? Uh, Zayden and Audison. Audison. Yeah, Zayden and Audison. What's the? Oh, oh, okay. Like Audie, like the car, Audie son. Oh, what's, is there a meaning to that? No, it just it was a cool name. That's cool. <laughs> it's, you know, I just had a son, so trying to find a name. Okay. It was like, um, I really wanted Bond, like James Bond. Oh, wow. So we settled for that as my middle, as my son's middle name, Brooklyn Bond Berg. Okay. It just rolls off, triple B. Yeah, that, okay, if he's a boxer. What? That's what I know, yeah. I told, I told, I told Gennady, I'm like, my son, my son's half Russian, so I'm like, be careful. You know, Triple B is going to be out. Triple B. <laughs> My daughter is grown, so I will not disclose her full name. <laughs> Mother, no, 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 thank you. Oh, Shane, I appreciate it. We appreciate you stopping by and you go enjoy your victory. I can't wait to hear who your next fight is mm -hmm. yeah. soon. I, you should have been calling out some fighters. Eddie Hearn, who I would know, Golden Boy, whoever, make, these fights are going to have to happen. Yeah, of course. We, I mean, we, I, I, now we, everyone saw how good you are, like really good. You, you got the goods. It'd be like, we got you. The time you. is right. The time I'm, is I'm right. only getting better, too. Ooh, I'm only getting better. Look at that. I love it. All right. Well, we're going to find out if your predictions come true for the, the female fight, because that's the spicy fight we're all excited to see. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, well, Jay, we are donezo. We thank you. Thank you for coming to visit us. We appreciate you. Door is always open, and this is another great episode for us. I know. Brown Table Talk is always open. Always. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, make sure you too. Oh, you, yeah. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe all of our channels on all our social content. We also have a TikTok that is booming, and our, some of our videos on, our, on, on YouTube are so you see, and they're, subscribe. I know. Go check out our David Benavides, Jose Benavides, Kayla Plant. Ooh, Alicia no. Baumgartner. Oh, yeah. Michaela Mayer. Um, uh, no the Donaires. Oh, my goodness. And we and, and we still got more in the can. Oh, we and and eventually we're going to release some of our After Dark specials. And, For Patreon. Oh, yeah. Oh, and man. that's when the spiciness comes out. We're talking about you, Jessica McCaffrey. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nothing was left off the table. We could ask anything. And it was off the chain. Any, I, I, yeah, anything. It's one right. of those kind of shows. All right. Well, we're going to wrap this one up. Thank you again. I am Cynthia Conte. And I'm Giandra LaBeouf. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of the best women's boxing show, period. See you guys at the fights. <laughs> <laughs>